So at work, I'm building a way for users to generate placeholder screens to represent information architecture before high fidelity designs get applied. And the way that I'm doing that is that I'm taking a fragment of the DOM and I'm rendering it to a canvas element. This is essentially a very, very small fragment of what the HTML to canvas library does. But I've been running into some issues on the edges with rendering wrapped text to the canvas object. And inherently the problem is the element that contains the text has no inherent line breaks to it. You can see the line breaks here are just caused because of the width of the element. In fact, if we increase the width of the element, the line breaks rendered for the user change as well. This would also happen if we, for example, increased the font size of the fonts. Now, let's just refresh here. So what I wanted to do was programmatically look at this text and see if I could figure out where those line breaks were happening such that I could then render one line of text at a time to the canvas element in my placeholder image. It turns out that the range object kind of gives us a path forward because the range object allows us to detect the rectangles used to contain the content within a range. So let's just quickly look at how this is working and then we'll look at the implementation details. So when I hit detect lines, what it's gonna do is incrementally create a range over this block of text. And as it's gonna do that, each subsequent line of text creates a client rectangle. And then we're gonna use the number of client rectangles to determine which line of text a particular character goes in. So if we jump down here and let's just clear this and we hit the tech lines, what you can see is that here we broke out our lines into individual, sorry, we broke out our text into individual lines and then we drew a red box around the rectangles provided by the range. And if we clear this, and let's just go back and, and remember how I said that lines were dynamically determined by the size of the element and the size of the font. Um, so let's just do that and hit this again. What you'll see is that we recalculated the new line breaks in the same text now with different rendering because of the way we changed the DOM. So let's look at the implementation detail to see how this works. But let's just talk about this theoretically at a high level. Imagine that we have a range and this range covers this entire block of text. When we call the bounded, get, uh, when we get the client rectangles for this content, we get these red boxes. And what it's doing is creating a box around each line of text. Now the rectangles don't tell us what text is in which box. However, as a thought experiment, imagine a range that has a single character in it. This single character is gonna be represented by a single client rectangle. Now what happens if we add a second character and a third character to that range? Well, if we add the second character and then we look at the number of client rectangles, we can determine which line the second character is in. If we added the second character and we still have a single client rectangle, it means that that second character is in that first line of text. But if we added the second character and now we suddenly have two client rectangles, what we know is that, that second character is actually part of the second line of text. Now, if we extend that to include the entire range, a character at a time, what we can determine is that the last character that we added to the range is always going to be in the last line of text. And that last line of text is going to be determined by the number of rectangles, right? So if the first character is the last character we added, it's going to be in the first rectangle, which is the only rectangle. If we then add the second character and suddenly there's a second rectangle, we know that that second character or the last character we added is in the second rectangle or the last of the rectangles created by a particular range. So let's look at that code to see what that actually looks like. So here's our sample text. And when we click the button, we call this extract lines from text node. And that's right here. Uh, I had to do a little bit of normalization of the text content to get Safari to work like the modern browsers. But all this really does is strip out the, uh, the white space and, and create a single line of text in the actual content, um, which because it's all just text, it shouldn't matter at all. So then we create our range 
and we're going to loop over the entire length of the text content. So just what I was talking about before, we're going to dynamically increase this range from the start of the text up to and including the current character that we're looking at. So this is gonna be the first character, then the second character, then the third character, and so on. Every time we add the last character, we then get the client rectangles that compose this range. And length minus one, because arrays in JavaScript are zero-based, this is always the last range, which becomes our line index. So again, the last character always goes in the last line of text, which is defined by the last range in the current selection. And then all we do is push that character onto the end of a character buffer. And once we have all of our characters in all of our lines, we just iterate over the lines and join those down into a single string. And then I'm just drawing the red boxes around the client rectangles so that we can see that the rectangles match the lines of text. So this only works for a text node, meaning that there's no uh, elements in here for, for formatting like bolds and italics and underlines and links, that kind of stuff. This is designed only to work with a text node, which is fine for my particular use case. And uh, it seems to work pretty consistently across the browsers. I don't have IE 11 installed anymore on this computer, so I can't uh, I can't check that. But I do know that range and get client rect all work in IE 11, so I I'm hopeful that this would actually work there as well. But uh, this will be a, I think this is going to be much easier than using the measure text method on the uh, Canvas 2D context because it's I'm not going to rely on what the text looks like on the canvas. I'm going to rely on what the text looks like in the browser, and that's going to be more representative of what the user's expecting in their placeholder screen. But I, I should have a, a more robust follow-up post once I get this into production, and I, can, and I can showcase a little bit more what that placeholder stuff looks like.